Now, in which of these was the most, we were supposed to rank, rank them in stability? So what's the order of stability here? The top one is the most stable. Most stable. The third is the second stable. And the last one. And how do you know? Because the first one is more substituted. One, That's right. That's an important lesson. We already know that substitution with alkyl groups stabilizes carbocations and it stabilizes radicals. And now we should also know that substitution stabilizes alkenes as well. Well, this is substituted three times, three carbon chains. This is substituted two times, and this is only substituted once. By the way, we should review now why that is. Do you guys remember why does substitution with carbon chains stabilize carbocations? Because the alkyl groups are um, electron um, dense. So electron no donating, good. And this is electron deficient. And why would substitution with alkyl groups stabilize a radical? Same reason. Because radicals are also electron deficient. They only have seven electrons and they want eight. But, why would substitution stabilize an alkene? I don't know if you guys have learned what the reason is for that. Now, are alkene carbons more or less electronegative than normal carbons? Well, what's the hybridization of this carbon? S S E. And what's the hybridization of a normal tetrahedral carbon? So which of these has more S character? The SP3. SP2 because it's like... This has one-third S character, and this uh, is only a quarter S character, right? Here, only a quarter of the orbitals are S, and here a third are S. So this one has more S character. The most S character would be SP, because then it would be 50% S character. Now, when we're putting electrons into atoms, who do we usually fill first? The S block or the P block? S. So where do electrons prefer to be? S. S. So if you have more S character, does that make you want more electrons or fewer? More. More. It means you're more electronegative. So this is an important new lesson about alkenes. Double bonded carbons are more electronegative because they have more S character. Not all carbons have the same electronegativity. Carbons with an sp2 hybridization want electrons more. So in a sense, can we say that these carbons are electron um, rich or electron deficient? Yes. Would we say they're electron rich or electron deficient? Which one? Yes. Deficient. They don't have as much carbons. That is, they want more carbons because they're so electronegative. Well, that explains why substitution also stabilizes alkenes. Because just like carbocations and radicals are, ele um, are electron deficient and want electrons, a sp2 carbon is also electron deficient and wants electrons. So now we know that substitution with alkyl groups, because alkyl groups are electron donating, substitution with alkyl groups stabilizes carbocations, radicals, and alkenes. That's a good note to have in your notes. You'll be using that for the whole rest of the course next semester as well. Substitution with alkyl groups stabilizes carbocations, radicals, and alkenes. And there's two reasons for that. The first part is that carbocations, radicals, and alkenes are all want more electrons. They all want more electrons. Now we know why alkenes want more electrons, because they have so much S character that electrons really like to be there. And why are carbon chains helpful? Because carbon chains are electron donating. We basically just have that memorized. Alkyl groups are electron donating, because they have more electrons than hydrogens, say, to donate. So you're right. This, the substitution here was the order of stabilization. So those are some important ideas. So for B, it's two. There's two options. Which of these was more stable? Um, and part B, which was more stable? Uh, the one in the middle. With the bond this one? Yeah, because it's more substituted. Good. There's only one possibility for the next one. Looking at C.
only one possibility. Yeah, there's no room for any more pi bonds in the middle because there's no, there's not, there's no hydrogens here. So that was one answer. Good. So that's not very stable, right? This one over here? Mm -hmm. It's not very stable because it's terminal, but there's nothing else to compare it to. Right. But yeah, it's not particularly stable. It's not, it's not like hugely unstable, but it's not as good as if it was an internal alkene. <coughs> and the next one there's three. So only two possibilities here? Three. Like this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And who's the most stable? The last one. This one? Because it's got three carbon chains. And who's the least stable? This one? No. This one? Ah, actually, Are they both have two carbon chains. They both have two carbon chains over here. Uh, so they be equally stable? Based on the amount of substitution, I suppose that they would. On the other hand, this is cis, and there might be some steric hindrance issues, so maybe this is the least stable. Why don't we check that in the institute? What did they say? I just thought, no, it's equal to each other. Those two are the same? Mm -hmm. oh. So, got equal stability here? Okay. So we got all those right? Yep. Okay. So the big lesson here is that hydrogenation turns pi bonds into sigma bonds. It turns carbon-carbon pi bonds into sigma bonds. There's a 14? Okay. So yeah, that was a good analysis. The question here was asking for the empirical formula of this structure. The empirical formula of this structure. Now you're right, if they ask you for the molecular formula, then A would be correct. A is the molecular formula. Because by definition, the molecular formula tells you the actual number of atoms in the molecule. But the definition of the empirical formula, the empirical formula is the ratios of the atoms. The empirical formula is supposed to be the ratio of the atoms reduced to smallest terms. It's supposed to be the ratio reduced to smallest terms. Well, 8 to 14 is not reduced to smallest terms. 4 to 7 is reduced to the smallest terms. So you're right, based on what they asked us, choice D was the right answer. Which problem are you working on now? 65. Okay. One. Yeah. 
How did you work that out? There's four carbons. Now, what would be the easier way to work that out? C4H10. Just draw the picture. Yeah, I drew the picture. And then just say, degrees of unsaturation is number of pi bonds plus number uh, of rings. So uh, one ring. So we don't actually have to work out the molecular formula here. We can use the other interpretation of the degrees of unsaturation, which is number of pi bonds plus the number of rings. For practice, you can confirm that the molecular formula would give you one, but the fastest way is just to count the number of rings here. Normally, you can't do that because normally you don't know how many rings and double bonds there are. But if you know the number of rings and double bonds, that's the easiest way to find the degree of unsaturation. So the answer was choice B. Mm -hmm.